first of all, I think the first part of your question was the possibility of Israel dragging the United States into over where we're already in it, but we're going to only play a defensive role. Uh, we're, we're not going to participate in offensive actions against Iran, at least not in the way this conflict is currently configured. We blame Israel uh, for much of what has happened. Uh, we don't say that, but our actions speak louder than our words. And um, when we tell Israel that, you know, if you want to attack Iran, you're on your own, we're not going to be there for you. Um, we mean that, uh, which increases the we're hoping that Israel will say, oh, well, since Big Brother's not going to be there with us, we're not going to do it. But Israel may just say, well, we're, we're, we've got the big toy, the nuclear weapon. And we're going to, my, my concern is if Iran launches a major attack against um, Israel that uh, results in heavy civilian casualties in Haifa, Tel Aviv or elsewhere, that Israel will follow through on its promise to destroy Iran's nuclear infrastructure. Um, in order to do that, at least on one of the targets, the fear those underground uh, enrichment facility, they're going to have to use a nuclear bunker buster. So they will use a nuclear weapon. And that genie's out of the bottle at that point in time. And, you know, I think um, this doesn't stop until Israel is destroyed with an Islamic bomb. Who delivers that Islamic bomb is another question altogether. But there will be an Islamic bomb. Islam will not tolerate Israel using a nuclear weapon against an Islamic country, even Iran. So, um, I, I, I hope the United States can communicate this. Uh, what I'm hoping is that um, we recognize the danger that we're in. That's one of the reasons why I'm excited to talk with Jill Stein, because she's very worried about this aspect uh, in Israel's nuclear weapons. You know, in the past, Israel hasn't signed the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty or um, agreed to any inspections. But I think this we are looking at a situation right now where Israel is faced with um, a real threat to its existential survival and that Israel is not cannot continue to exist the way that it is currently configured and that at some point in time for Israel to uh, be reabsorbed into the uh, family of nations, they're going to have to have a conversation about their nuclear weapons, especially at this time where it's on the table. Everybody's concerned about the potential use. We can't allow this scenario to play out over time. Um, if Israel avoids using nuclear weapons, then we have to take those nuclear weapons away from Israel. And I think that should be a goal of the United States and the international community uh, going forward. Uh, I got 25 seconds. What do I think about um, the Sinwar being the head of Hamas? It's logical and that's bad for Israel. Israel imprisoned this man for many, many years. He knows Israel. He knows how the Israelis think. He's the mastermind of October 7th. And um, I think Israel um, will have met their match in terms of Sinwar. Session Mumbai. What happens when an ABM successfully intercepts a nuclear-tipped ballistic or cruise missile? Does the missile become a dud or does the nuclear charge detonate? A good question. Um, it depends on who built the nuclear device and what safety mechanisms are contained in the device. Um, you know, it, um, are there follow-on you know, um, uh, safeties that um, get activated on the way down, or is it ready? To, is the bomb ready to blow up the moment it launches? Nobody wants that. Understand that if I have a nuclear weapon on top of my missile and I launch and I have one of those malfunctions, which happen all the time, you know, the missile spins out of control and I got, now I got a 150 kiloton warhead on top and it hits and goes boom because I didn't. So there's safeties built in um, and how those workers classified and frankly speaking i don't understand but they, <laughs> their safety is built into it so uh, if you hit it now let's say that uh, the, the the warhead becomes active on its uh re-entry phase once it's been released to the target um and then it gets hit um it depends on the warhead design um if the warhead design is compromised what you'll probably get is a fizzle meaning that the weapon will, will go off. But um, for instance, if it's a, um, if it's an implosion device, uh, unless all the explosive charges go off at once and you perfectly compress the, uh, the core so that it then goes critical and blows up. If, uh, if, if you blow up one or two of these things, you get an incomplete, you get a fizzle. You don't get the critical mass. You don't get, it just fizzles. So you get a little puff. And it's going to put a lot of contamination out there, but it's not going to be the big 150 kiloton. Uh, or same thing with the gun design. If you come in and damage the gun design, you're not going to get the efficiency of operation. 
um, peanut design. You take out the, uh, the, the neutron generating materials and you're going to get a fizzle. It's not going to function. So, um, and it also depends what your ABM is tipped with. Uh, back in the day, we were using nuclear weapons <laughs> against nuclear weapons. So you sort of fry them. Um, the, the, the bottom line though, is that, um, you're probably not going to get a full scale nuclear detonation, um, with modern nuclear weapons, given the safeties that are built into it. Uh, but even if you did, um, if a weapon had been unsafe, ready for operation, the damage that would be done to the warhead is such that you'll probably get a fizzle as opposed to an actual full scale explosion. There are reports of Hezbollah moving their military assets and personnel out of Beirut. The reporting now says that they are moving to more secure areas. My belief is that they are showing the world that Israel has no strategic purpose in attacking Beirut. My bet is they will. What are your thoughts on these movements? Um, Hezbollah is a political party and um, they're also a resistance movement um, that's been preparing to fight Israel for some time now. Um, I, I'm not saying that they don't have military resources in Beirut. I would be surprised if they maintained, um, strategic military resources in Beirut, because that's not where they need to be. They need to be outside of Beirut in a more secure area. You know, just think about what you're saying for a second. They're moving their resources out of Beirut, um, elsewhere. That's detectable. Clearly somebody detected it because we're talking about it in this day and age. If I detect it, I have technology. The Israelis have technology. America has technology to continue to detect it and uh, to follow it to where it's going. And now that becomes a target. I just don't think the, uh, that Hezbollah is that, um, that, that amateurish. There might be some movement of uh, support units, um, uh, some command functions that might've existed inside Beirut because of, uh, the proximity with the political arm, they might be moving some of the political arm outside of Beirut. Um, but I don't think Hezbollah um, was, was the, again, I also don't think that Hezbollah is in the business of turning Beirut into a legitimate military target. Um, I believe that the majority of their, the vast majority of their military resources are stored outside of Beirut in more uh, defensible uh, locations. Um, the last thing Hezbollah would want to do is turn Beirut into a legitimate target and incur the wrath of the Lebanese people when Israel bombed it. And it turned out that Hezbollah had in fact militarized entire civilian neighborhoods. Um, so I, I think that this story is a little bit overblown, but that's just reading the tea leaves. Um, I just don't see Hezbollah putting strategic resources inside Beirut only to have to move them in a time of conflict when everybody's looking for them, obviously detected them moving it. And now it opens it up for destruction. I can guarantee you that if, if Hezbollah is moving, um, long range precision guided missiles out of Beirut and it got detected, they're going to be destroyed before they get to where they're going. That's just a guarantee, which tells me that that's not what's happening. So I, 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 I take the story of the grain of salt. Um, yeah. So Scott, um, with all the jamming going on in the Middle East, specifically GPS jamming, um, how the hell is an Iranian mis um, ballistic missile still able to find its way to accurately, accurately hit its target in um, Israel? I always thought it like I thought that'd be a mystery. Well, no, it's a it's a it's a good question. Um, you know, I don't. I only can speculate because I haven't inspected Iranian missile systems, so I'm not aware. But there are things that can be done. For instance, um, you can use um, uh, inertial guidance. Uh, uh, the Russians and the Americans were very good at inertial guidance in the days before GPS. Inertial guidance, um, you know, uses gyroscopes and accelerometers. The missile takes off in the gyroscope and the accelerometer, you know, detect deviations from the ideal course uh, where it needs to go. And, um, you know, the idea is to, to guide it in. And if you have good uh, inertial guidance systems, you can get a circular error of probability of, you know, 50 to 100 meters. Um, yeah, they really good, maybe a little bit bigger. Uh, but then what you can do is on the, uh, on the terminal phase, you can use, um, sort of like the equivalent of facial res recognition software, where you, uh, where you have a radar map or a uh, photo map 
of the facility、um, in the memory, and the system as it comes in starts scanning, looking for a match, and then it locks in on that match and will come in. And there's no need at that point in time, since that's all internal.、Uh, there's there's no need for a GPS and. A lot of systems use a blend of that. They'll they'll incorporate GPS with inertial.、Uh, the Attackum systems, the HIMARS system, use a blend of、uh, GPS and、uh, inertial guidance, along with some sort of terminal、uh, guide phase. So I believe the Iranian missiles incorporate, you know,、um, the, this technology or other technologies that are designed to allow their missiles to operate in a、um, in a in an environment where the satellite connectivity would be jammed. Next question is from Abu Abdallah, allegedly in Jerusalem, Palestine.、Hmm. Due to the psychological and anxiety-provoking pressure that the axis of resistance is putting on Israel, do you think that Israel might launch a preemptive strategic nuclear strike on Iran instead of waiting for the retaliation? It's a good question. It's one that、uh, many people have asked recently. If Israel launches a preemptive strike against Iran, I believe that it will be a strike that's designed to interrupt Iran's ability to launch ballistic missiles against Israel, and it won't incorporate nuclear weapons.、Um, uh, that's that defeats the purpose of the preemptive strike is to nullify Iran's ability to strike.、Um, Israel has said that it it will、um, if Iran strikes civilian targets, that Israel will. Strike Iran's nuclear infrastructure, and here's where you get,、um, you know, the nuclear aspect of targeting, because、um, at least two of Iran's nuclear facilities are underground.、Um, one of them, Firdos, there's no conventional weapon that will be able to take it out. If you're going to take out the Firdos enrichment site,、uh, you will have to use a nuclear、uh, bunker-busting weapon.、Um, And Israel has said that they will take out these facilities if Iran strikes civilian targets. So a preemptive strike is designed to prevent Iran from being able to take out that the civilian targets. So,、um, so I don't think a preemptive strike would incorporate nuclear weapons. But I do believe that a Israeli retaliation against a massive Iranian strike that takes out Haifa, does significant damage in Tel Aviv, etc., will incorporate、um, low yield nuclear weapons, but nuclear weapons nonetheless. And, Now the genie's out of the bottle, and、uh, I think the world comes to an end at that point in time. So,、um, yay! There we are. <laughs> But I don't think the preemptive strike would use nuclear weapons. It would be that would be the retaliatory strike designed to take out、uh, the nuclear sites. And then the question is、uh, how you know what the United States does in this regard. Are we going to sit back and let this happen?、Um, this is insanity, literal insanity.、Um, you know, and and. You had Miller, the 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 the, the spokesperson, the State Department up there. Now, somebody asked the question,、uh, "Why isn't Iran allowed to defend itself? Didn't Israel attack Iran? Can Iran defend itself?" That's an unhelpful question. <laughs> unhelpful. <laughs> unhelpful question, because of course Iran has a right to retaliate, but the United States doesn't recognize that right. We literally want a situation where Israel can go in and assassinate. Uh, High-level、um, Hamas leadership figures in Tehran and get away with literal murder.、Um, the Iranians have made a decision that that's not the、uh, not the case. And just、uh, 22 seconds, predicting Zionists using tactical nukes in southern Lebanon not likely, not likely at all. Not my, not not initially. I mean, look, if Israel is engaged in a war that they're losing, it looks like they're facing existential,、uh, you know, ex- extermination. All bets are off, but initially, no, I don't think so.